Good morning, everyone. This is Chris Graffanina with Core Commerce, and welcome to another fabulous episode of the Core Commerce webinar series, where I take you through uh, different features of the shopping cart platform. Perfect. And so today's episode is going to be about widgets and my hilarious title of widgets. What the heck are they? I couldn't think of anything else to call this webinar. So I went with that. Um, so we're going to just discuss what a widget is in the shopping cart, um, what purpose they serve, and then what kind of widgets you can create and then, you know, what's possible. So um, if everyone's ready, I will go ahead and get started with the presentation. So first, let me introduce myself for anybody who's new to this webinar series. My name is Chris Graffinino. I'm the COO of Core Commerce. I've been in the e-commerce space since 2003. I started out doing sales and support all at the same time. Uh, if you can believe it, we were very small back then, kind of did everything. And uh, you know, we've grown into a good sized company now. We're very happy with where we are and we're extremely excited about the future uh, of where our business is going as well. So I'm um, looking forward to doing this presentation for you guys today. So widgets, what the heck are they? Um, the first question I'll ask is how can widgets help your store? Um, so let's define what a widget is. It's a snippet of code that you can plug into your store, uh, your core commerce website um, to serve specific purposes in the design of your store. Um, it can be to display a list of items like categories or content pages, or display a dropdown of different choices to help you filter products like vendors. Um, or it can be used to put, if you viewed previous webinars I've done, it can be used for the multiple currencies feature or the multiple languages feature that we've discussed in the past. Um, it can also be you know, used for things like search and top sellers and recently viewed items and custom items too, which I'll get into uh, towards the end of the webinar. And so what exactly is a widget? Um, it, it's a, like I said, a snippet of code. It can be displayed on the left side of your design or the right side of your design as shown here. You'll, you'll notice in this screenshot, this is just a standard uh, free trial that I created just to take some screenshots for you. And you notice on the left-hand side, there's a widget for login. There's a widget for displaying categories. There's a widget for shop by price. And then there's a picture of this lady brushing through her hair. That would be considered an image widget, which you can customize and put your own images and your own, your own code into. Um, and I'll show you how to do that at the end. There's a widget down at the bottom to do a poll. Uh, if you look on the right-hand side in this, in this example, there's a widget that shows all of my content pages that I wish to show in that widget. There's a widget to join the core commerce newsletter feature. Um, and then specials, you know, there's, there's, there's widgets for the blog if you use the blog feature. So there's all kind of little widgets that, that you can plug in that serve different purposes. And again, why would we use a widget? Um, main thing is, you know, widgets can be very helpful because they're just kind of little bookmarks to to things in the store without having to go back and find them again, right? So, oh yeah, here's the list of categories again, or, you know, oh, here's the list of vendors or, you know, here, oh, where's that special sale link at again? Oh, it's right here in this widget, right? So they're very good for just kind of giving customers an easy way to see something um, without having to go find it again. And, you know, whether it's viewing the categories or a quick way to run another search or, a quick way to see how many items they have in their, their shopping cart at the moment. Um, it's an easy way to kind of just push customers across the goal line. And as I wrote out there, um, just make it a little simpler for them to, to make sure they have zero reservations about hitting the, the purchase button. And so, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are many different widgets that could exist, whether there's, you know, you can see some of them in this list here. Um, these are just a, a list of the basic standard ones that just come built in um, that you don't even have to, to worry about using or creating, I should say, you know, whether it's displaying the list of categories to your customers or displaying a deal of the day or a, a widget for your featured items or a widget for logging into your store. 
uh, polls, you know, down that list. And, you know, all those widgets exist. You can plug them in anywhere inside your header or footer, however you see fit. And there are a couple of ways to do that. You could manually, you know, take the little snippet of code that it would give you in the widget list and plug it into your header or footer manually if you choose to, or you could actually plug it in um, using the editor, uh, which I'll show you here in just a second. And to, you know, to get to the screen where you wanna to, to control where the widgets are displaying and use the, the tool that can let you kind of drag and drop them around, you would go to site content and then you'd see sidebar widgets there. And when you do that, you'll be taken to this drag and drop tool. Um, and some of you uh, have probably seen this tool before and used it when you set up your store. But this nifty tool just gives you a quick way to, to, to grab a widget and place it uh, in the design of your store, whether it's, you know, oh, I want the login widget to be on the left and I want it to be the first widget, right? But then let's say the next day I come around and I was like, actually, you know what? I want the categories to be the first widget. Well, it's just a matter of dragging that little blue categories box above login and saving it. And it remembers the, not only which widget you want to display on the left and the right, but in which order as well. And when you open that drop down in the middle, it gives you all the different options for any of the other widgets that you could use in your store, whether it's blog related or multiple languages or vendors or you know any of the other widgets that exist. And any custom widgets you create will show up in that drop down menu as well. So you can grab them and drag over a custom widget uh, onto the left or to the right to use as well. As far as configuring some widgets, you know, as, as I showed you a little bit ago, the, there's the entire list of some of the pre-built widgets and, and you can open some of these menus up. And for example, this is the, the options related to the search widget. So um, not only, you know, can you just create, uh, have a search widget and put it on the left side of your design or the right side of your design, but you can also come to this screen and open up this little menu and in control, you know, a little bit about what the search actually does and how it works. So for example, um, do I want the search tool to search within subcategories or just the top level categories? Do I want it to allow for partial searches, um, you know, which just affects how we query the database for, for potential product uh, search matches. And then there's search results logic. You see that drop down. There's standard logic, and then there's advanced logic, and then there's Google site search. And standard logic just does a basic search. It just you know says, search all these fields for this value. And that's as far as it goes. And you can tell it whether it's an and search or an or search. And what that means is, you know, if I say, um, let's say blue space hat is my search. Um, you know, that search behavior just decides whether am I searching for all of those words to be in the, in the names, you know, or if it set to or, uh, either the word blue or the word hat could be in the result and that would qualify a product to show up as a result. So um, e easily configurable to kind of tailor this based on what you sell and what makes more sense for how you would do it. Down below, you'll notice at the bottom, um, it tells you all the different fields that it would actually search through when a search is run. And you can go down there and you can tell it, you know, no, I don't want it to search category description. I just literally want it to search the category name and the product name and that's it. Well, then you can go down there and tell it that and tell it to ignore all those other fields and, and narrow down what fields it has to search. Um, Obviously, the more fields it's searching, you know, the longer it might take that search to run. So, you know, instead of it taking half a second, it might take two seconds to, to search a little more because it's got all this other stuff to search through. Um, but it depends. It also depends on how much content you have in, in your website. So if you have very long product descriptions and it makes sense for the descriptions to do that, or um, if you have a lot of product options and you want to make sure it's scanning through all the, the option names, like the personalization names or the option set names, you can com configure that as well in here. And this search result is just one of the examples of being able to go into a widget and configuring, you know, either how it, how it lays out or what the logic is behind what it displays. And you can get to all of those by just going to site content. Um, and I believe go to the 
main widgets screen and then you'll see that whole list. One other option is if you go to site content again and then click uh, custom widgets. So for example, back here, if I click custom widgets on this screen under the navigation, I can come to a screen that will show me all of the custom widgets that exist. Uh, there are a couple in there by default, but you can create your own. And when you create your own, you can do a couple of different things. You can either, you know, as you see on this screenshot, you can either upload an image and let it just display an image that links to something. Uh, you can just add your own text and code if you just want to just you put you have some custom HTML from, you know, a third party app like a, you know, let's say it's a, either a MailChimp or a HubSpot or something where you want to grab a little form that you created in that platform and paste it in here so people can sign up for a, for a certain mailing list in MailChimp, for example. Uh, you could use that text and code feature for that. Body is if you just wanted to say something, you can just type in what you wanted to say and it will just say that, right? And this these widgets do work with certain tokens as well. So there's pieces of dynamic text that it can use to populate a few things uh, in your body if you wanted to do that. I, what I've seen people do with these custom widgets is either you make a little small image that says, you know, 50% off Halloween sale, click here, and it links to your specials page. I've seen customers use it, um, you know, to, to show off that their site is secure uh, for and, and safe to collect credit card payments through it by putting the little seal that says, you know, powered by core payment or whatever. So you can use a widget to do that kind of thing as well. Um, I've seen people plug in form code from MailChimp and Constant Contact and so that I can subscribe to a MailChimp newsletter directly from the widget um, instead of having to have somebody manually, you know, go through and grab people and manually pick, add them in the MailChimp by hand. You can just automate that process by using this kind of deal. So the possibilities of how these widgets can be used really are endless and um, happy to show anybody how they how they how you add them and if there's any other questions anyone has about what you can do with a widget um, that is something I could be more than happy to answer so with that I believe that's the end um, 